Now this is a rare video today as you guys and gals get to see my truck my truck's dashboard at night. Uh, I'm leaving Fort Erie, Canada on the way to the border. Got up at 4.15 in the morning today. 4.15. And of course as usual it takes me about 45 minutes. That's why I set my alarm not for 4 or 4.30 but 4.15. Because I wanted to leave at 5. And... At 4 kilometers, keep to the right on trucks to USA. Yeah, because from here it's almost seven hours of driving to Baltimore. That's where I'm going with this uh, ditch witch. Basically a little, like a farm tractor with a, with a digging attachment in the back. Circle tour. Yeah, I want to do that in a in a 75 foot long tractor trailer. And this is duty free plaza, so you can park your truck overnight here. But it's so noisy here. Uh, truck leave all the time, come and go. You know. I used to stop here a lot, but now I just stop over there at uh, mile marker 5. But that thing filled up yesterday real early. And this morning I saw trucks parked on the road outside. Uh, there's an abandoned uh, gas station next door. See, you can even sleep here. Right next to the river. So let's see what the Peace Bridge looks like at night. Slide right on Lake Erie Circle Tour and then take the entrance to the right in 1.4 kilometers. Does she say cycle tour or circle tour? to write home about you know I thought the illumination on the bridge would be slightly more holiday like hey buddy the speed limit is 50k an hour here this guy is flying 75 minimum And this river, I always hate it in winter. It looks so, you know, turbulent and uh, and frightening. Crossing border, entering New York. So this is Buffalo, New York. Now we gotta deal with customs. Where are you going? How long do you plan on staying in the U.S.? Any weapons on board? In a quarter mile, take the entrance to the right on I-190 South RT-266 and then keep to the left in 300 feet. Yeah, this is that nasty turn I, I talked about before. Like there's cars on your left, you really have to watch your uh, trailer wheels because you can catch the curb on the right very sharp. 
and very narrow lanes so you gotta go in the car lane and they don't always appreciate that so you gotta push your way politely the right on I-190 South RT 266 and then keep to the left in 300 feet all right let's go here remember what I said last time I said never go after uh, a small vehicle like this guy that was flying over the bridge because they always are uh, take longer than than regular trucks and we are in uh, in the US in Buffalo New York the downtown is on the left and looked like it's gonna be raining today again yesterday it rained all day so I was loading in the rain, it got all wet, it wasn't pretty. And we have an accident. This is I-390 in Pennsylvania South. I'm just two and a half miles away from uh, exit for US 15. I'm heading to Baltimore. And because of this rain, I saw a bunch of accidents yesterday in Ontario. Um, I was in the middle lane going through uh, construction because the right lane was too narrow, like heading to, towards my pickup yesterday uh, near Barrie, Ontario. And there was a guy in the right lane in a small car and I think he hit the concrete wall there and he tried to compensate but I think he was going too fast and it was you know raining very hard so he just he was thrown across all three lanes right in front of me uh, and hit at full speed he smashed into the left concrete wall you know and he was spawning like his hood became like this basically total loss and the car spinning around, uh, raised on two tires. I thought he would flip over, no. And then he was thrown back. And I had, I'm, I'm watching this like in, you know, in real time, like a slow motion. And I had two thoughts. One, where is he gonna stop? Because I was doing like maybe 80, 85 k an hour, but still, you know, going fast. But I was empty, so I could stop. And my second thought was. Too bad I don't, my dash cam is not running. But this happens like real seldom, you know, where you see an accident right in front of you happening. Oh, it's not, it's not the, uh, it's not the, an accident, it's uh, road work. But a few miles back there was a sign saying that the passing lane closed between mile marker 40 and 42 accident. So this is probably something else. But anyway, so yeah, that car went like this, then was spinning around, and and it ended up in the same lane where he started, in the curb lane. So everybody like, Jesus, you know? But it was a real bad impact on the concrete wall because it, it went like 90 degrees. So, so folks, be extremely careful when it's raining and you're going through construction zone at high speed in the curb lane. And that's why I don't like curb lanes because, you know, uh, in a construction zone where they shift the, the lanes, the right lane is actually the former shoulder, right? And the shoulder, uh, quite often in a construction zone, uh, is not even with the actual pavement so there'll be like a few lines and your car or your vehicle will be shifted it'll be pushed sideways I feel it all the time in my truck that's why I always slow down especially like in a bridge so those curb lanes can be real dangerous 
and so this guy was uh, driving fast I'm positive because he passed me uh, chose the wrong lane a very narrow dangerous lane in a construction zone and the rain was very bad my wipers were like you know maximum speed and we have a small airport on the right Too bad it's uh, raining I see like the landscapes you know I'm driving and I'm thinking about my camera in the back back in my sleeper <laughs> the sky you know these clouds it's amazing with uh, with the uh, fall colors and you know I love New York in in this uh, during this kind of uh, year not New York City but New York State New York Pennsylvania they have these gorgeous you know, hills, trees, but it's raining, you know, I don't want to take pictures in the rain. All right, what's happening over here? Why did you guys close the passing lane? So 50% of the lanes is closed and naturally this causes major pain in the butt for travelers because this is a busy highway yeah now I'm leaving 1.4 miles I'm going right or west towards uh, US 15 all right what do we got so I see some hay some tow trucks why do we have tow trucks oh they just brought some they are fixing some pipe okay some kind of a plastic pipe and they're just replacing some pipe probably it's a drainage uh, oh yeah probably that's why yesterday was a very heavy rain day and it was probably causing flooding or something if the pipe was uh, was jammed all right how far to Baltimore? Two. Two hundred sixty-seven miles. So I should be there 1:40 p.m. So let's say 2 p.m. Perfect. Well, and this is my load. They don't have any more excavators for me to haul. So uh, my previous record was 86,000 pounds. Now I have a 90,000 pound ditch witch wait or did they say 9,000 anyway pretty pretty big machine uh, can dig a trench up to six inches wide five feet deep so it has this thing in the back hydraulics and the blade 1995 and you can see it's heavy by all this extra weight so yeah I, I do think it's about 90,000 pounds because I had to use two of my two of my axles here three on the truck so it's you know it's a responsible job oh and one thing here I wanted to point out sometimes when I get stuff like this you see how close it is to the center where I have a hole so we had a trouble loading this we just used some blocks because my ramps are spaced wider but because I have these pins in here I just removed one and now when I'm driving I just have to stay closer this way and make sure that the, the other tire goes on that ramp now i'm extensively trained in this kind of machinery uh, the guy who loaded it uh, did like a five minute intro and we did a written test so i'm all good to go
do.